Hey guys, today's video is going to be about the Cruel Prince series. So, I hope you're all staying safe and well, and let's get into it. Here's the books in the series. The Cruel Prince, The Wicked King, and The Queen of Nothing. I finished these bad boys in like a day each. They were pretty phenomenal. So, let's chat, okay? So, The Curl Prince. It was peak enemies to lovers. And I've heard a lot of controversy about this book, about people saying like, oh, the romance is so understated, it shouldn't even be, like, marketed as enemies to lovers, rah, rah, whatever. To me, this is a perfect enemies to lovers book because it actually has a plot away from the relationship away from the will they won't they relationship i love having plots away from the romantic interest to show that you can have a big tension filled interesting sucking you in romance as well as having a huge plot away from romance that doesn't revolve around rom romance so i loved this i thought it was a fantastically done. Now, in the first book, they're not really it they're not really to the lover part at all, but they definitely do have the will they won't they can't stop thinking about each other, tension, hate, but love to hate, like they definitely have that thing going in the first book, like hate each other, but hate to admit they also like each other, like that's very much the vibe in the first book. Also, just <sighs> Jude, I just, I loved Jude, like she was annoying, I wanted to shake her sometimes, but I love Jude, she's so spunky, and I love having a character that's not that's not just super nice or just like whatever like she had passion she had drive she was going to go after what she wanted she adapted to her surroundings being in a fairy world as a mortal she was sort of hyper vigilant and protected herself from the horrors she knew in that world as a mortal and from how they treated her etc so I love Jude. It's also so interesting as you read the other books to see how Cardin's described in this book versus how he's described in the other two books and how much you see his character progression. He has some of the best character progression ever. Like, and you see so much stuff in this book and then you see in the other two books that Jude's perspective is not necessarily true to who he is it's just how he how she saw her how she saw him prior based on their experiences in school and whatnot but great book does a great job of setting the ground for the characters also Maddox, like it sets up that conflicted relationship she has with him as her father figure but also the person who's the reason why her birth parents are not around so that conflicted relationship is big as well. Her twin sister, Taryn. Throw that girl to the wind. I hated her. Hated her. She was the worst. She was a snake. She was a jerk. She was a low life. She betrayed her sister. No. She mm -mm. no. Throw her out. I hated Taryn. Nothing she did in the other two books could rectify her character for me and I know there's like a spin-off book of like her perspective with the events that go on in the series no I don't want to read it I hate Taryn period okay Locke 
hate him too. I knew, I knew, I knew not to trust him. He was doing too much. He was acting too much. He was too fond of the games. No, I hated him. And he only gets worse as the books go on. But yeah, hated him. As soon as he started talking to her crazy at the ball, talking about like, if I hurt you, would you cry over me? No. I'm so glad she was like, no, if you hurt me, I would hurt you back. And I kind of wish she had done more to live up to that, to hurt him back, because no, he was a dog. He was dirty. He was low. But yeah, the first book really sucked you and did a great job of setting up the world when she found the piece of paper with her I'm just gonna say, like, that was just, it was something. It was something. And the way she took it, I was like, no. But, thankfully, it got explained later. So, yeah. Even though he was presented as a jerk in this one, I still, like, loved Cardin in this. But it's nothing compared to the character progression we see in the other two books. But, yeah. 10 10 great book ate it up so quick number two the wicked king this may be my favorite book in the series and funny enough when i first started reading it i was like a fourth of the way through and i was like oh this is kind of slow like this kind of isn't doing as much as the first one that sucked you up so quick but I was wrong, okay? As soon as I thought that, then all of a sudden the book took off and continued to take off and stayed taking off for the rest of the book. So 80% of the book is like, go, go, go. Breakthrough after breakthrough. And yeah. This honestly may be my favorite book in the series and after I thought about that I was searching the book on Twitter and it seemed like a lot of people also have this as their favorite book in the series but it's literally so good you see so much card in progression in this book it's a fantastic phenomenal and the like passion and like heat they have with each other just gets built more and more and more and more and the one scene where they're like I'm kissing okay it was hot um it was hot it was heavy it was everything I was like Whew. and the way it was just it was like the first book built so much and then this just like it more and more and more and I was like okay you also start to see him as less of a villain and more of who he is so much in this book so love that and yeah there's parts where she's like just thinking the worst of him and I just want to I just want to shake her and be like no like he really likes you and he's actually not fantastic 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 book the ending made me so mad though i was so mad i was like this was such a phenomenal book and then the ending just made me furious but yeah i don't know she got to experience more of a power play in this book which was interesting to see of course, it makes sense that she wanted power so much, growing up so powerless in this world and having to fight and be the best to survive. So, we get to see Jude with more of a power dynamic in this book, which is great. We see Maddox and his wiles. We see the sisters who I didn't care for. We see Locke being underestimated because Locke's the real villain in these books. I'm just going to put that out there. But, and 
also the undersea people nakasi of what was her name nakasia or something i did not like her i know they were trying to i don't like that's one thing i don't like when there's like a character who's continuously like beating up and just being a jerk to the main character and then they still are trying to get right with them throughout the course of the series i'm like no can we just throw her out to like she's a jerk for like no reason besides that the guy she loved is into you like i just wanted them to toss her out already so i also didn't like her um yeah i don't know there were moments honestly let's just ignore the train there were moments when i just wanted jude to honestly command more like she still let people like disrespect her and maybe that was from growing up as a mortal in this world but as she came more into these positions with more power i wanted her just to be like no you're gonna listen to me this is the way you're gonna talk to me etc etc i wanted her to command more because she had so much power that other people didn't know about and she didn't command it and maybe it was smarter that way because it made her not have the target on her back that she would have had had people known but I just wanted her to command more of that power that she actually had um, but yeah, loved this book loved how Cardin did his thing I just loved watching Cardin in this book and just like, so much happened and yeah it was so good And the betrayal, okay. Obviously can't say who, but the betrayal was something else. I saw the signs early on and I just wanted her to see the signs too. But realistically, if you're in that position, you probably wouldn't have guessed that person either. Because there was just so much going on. But yeah. I also liked how in this book we see her a sort of trying to trying to put to rest her anxieties her worries when she sees stuff and her intuition tells her it's not a good idea or it's not something they should decide whatever they decide on etc and her trying to calm herself and tell herself oh it's probably nothing and then i love how you see those things later on and how you see maybe those things aren't nothing maybe she was right maybe she should have gone with her gut and made a bigger stink about some things so i love that as well i love when in writing film etc the writers hint at something they give you a little clue to something and then you see that later i love that so that's big in this book things are introduced in this book that changed the rest of the series so fantastic 10 out of 10 queen of nothing i loved this one too this is either my second favorite tied with the wicked king i don't know because it was so good and like you see the to lovers part finally blossom in this book Cardin's character development comes to you ahead and it's just beautiful I was in love it was wonderful you see the lengths he goes to to get her to get her um yeah to get her you see they resolve what happened in the last book at the end very nicely very well um you see Cardin's just turned into this this actual great ruler and you see he's just you see how he's just wielded his power the power that he has gotten in whatever form in this different way you see how he's grown into just you just see how he's grown into himself so much how jude has influenced him and also how he's just come into his own right his own power you learn things that happened in the first book that aren't the way we thought they were in the first book just it wraps everything up and everything comes to head perfectly in it and it's go 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 from like the second chapter until the second final conflict at the end 
that's one thing I will say I could have done without the second big conflict at the end. The first final conflict at the end was enough for me, but I will say the second conflict went perfectly like in that type of world you would kind of expect something like that to happen and you kind of would need it to go out with bigger, with a bigger bang. So the second conflict did fit, but I kind of just didn't care to read it because Cardin was not there um, in the same way for that second conflict. And I was like, I just wanted to see Cardin and her again because that's what was built and came to its head. So I just wanted to see them, and I didn't care to see a second conflict without them as them. So, in the very last bit of the book, when that second conflict came, I was kind of like, mm, I didn't really care for it as much, but it made sense, it was done well, and it would be so cool to see in a movie, just saying. But yeah, Ejude also has a big character arc in this book and you see the growth in this book from the first book where she realizes that love may not be the weakness she thought it was or may not have the weight as a weakness as she thought it had before so i loved seeing that character growth from her i do wish she had wielded her power more too and commanded the presence and made it known that she would not expect people talking to her a certain way or not giving her the respect she was owed in her position but it was uh, just a very good book the scene where they finally get around to get around to like boom bang doing the thing okay <sighs> it was steamy very steamy incredibly steamy hot and heavy. There's a scene in this book where they tell each other they hate each other but they mean it so like sensitively and passionately that it's as if they're saying they love each other and I didn't think that scene could be topped but in this book it pretty much gets topped because just the steaminess of when they get together in this book is something else something from dreams okay so yeah this book is a uh, phenomenal and i like that they dive more into the family bonds again with her and Maddox. i like that she has a decision to make as to just what she's going to give Maddox or not and yeah i just love the character growth and yeah i just this book it was so good so yeah phenomenal so yeah the three books 10 out of 10s loved them definitely recommend I loved loved them as enemies to lovers loved them as storylines fantasy plots etc they were fantastic so yeah hope you guys could enjoy this video and i hope to see you in my next one bye